Hey guys, today we're actually going to do a common Python interview question. I stole this out of a popular interview coding book for Java, actually, and decided to convert it into Python for you guys today. So, obviously the prompt here is in the multi-line comment, so I'm going to just break it down. Basically, if someone enters a string with repeated characters that are next to each other, it's going to just shorten it with the numeric the, re the amount of times it repeats. But if it happens to be longer, we're just going to actually return the original string instead, which is actually quite rare. So let's get started. First, we need the string, right? So I'm just going to store that in a variable and get us to do that. Enter a string with repeated characters. And I'm just going to create a new line there. So then I'm going to do this in a function. So then um, I'll call it just like that. So it's erroring because it doesn't exist. So I'm going to make it compress string and uh, get the line. All right. So first things first, I want to be able to create the, uh, the new um, string because we're going to have the original guy and then we're going to have the new guy. So I'm going to say the new string is going to be empty because we have we don't know what it's going to be yet. And then because we need to how many times each letter repeats next to each other, we're going to have to keep track of that. So I'm going to use that variable count to do that. And then I'm going to create a for loop that goes for as long as the original string was so that we can flip through each letter individually or each index. So Obviously, the first thing I want to do is be able to keep track of that second letter, the one that's next to it. Like if I have A and other A, B is the third guy, right? So let's create, I don't know, J. But he has to be the guy next to him. So we'll do plus equals one, which automatically adds one to the current total. So at this point, we can actually do it. We can say, hey, at line index I, does he equal line at index J? Now, if he does, we want to add to the count variable, and if he doesn't, we want to get the current letter to be added to that um, new string. Now, we also need to keep track of the numeric count as well, but he's a number, so we have to convert to string. That's what str is in order to do that first. So at this point, this would error out because when we reach the last letter, J is always the one next to it, and that doesn't exist. So it would be like, ah, I can't find it, and it would error out like crazy. So we're gonna fix that by putting an error exception around this, and that is called a try except inside of Python. So you just indent it, just like have some while loops and all that stuff, and you type except. So you have to have an except with a try. There is no other way. So in the except, we know this is what's going to happen when it errors out. And when it errors out is when J can't reach the next index because I is the very last one. So at that point, we know there's nothing more to check. But we need to know if that letter was the same as the one before that or if it's different because we need to know if it gets a one because it would be a new guy or if it gets whatever count was the last guy plus one. So in order to do that, we are obviously going to have to write some code. So in here, we're going to say, hey, the last index of value i, right? That's what is important to us right now. So if we add to the string, the current letter, right, or character, but we need to check the count number. We don't know if it's a new guy or not. So we're going to do an if else. Before we do that, we're going to reset our j gun, right? Because I want to reuse a variable instead, just preference. And subtract one rather than adding one, because I want to go back one. We're checking for that count. So here we go. If the string at index j, it's kind of the same statement we did earlier. Oh, oh string. At the line at index of, yep, you know what, I wrote line. My bad. 
he caught that. Good job. And line at index j. So same thing as earlier. Now, if that is the case, we do want to attribute the current value of the count variable. If it's not, then we just want to add a one because it's a new character. It's different than the last ones. So at that point, we wouldn't be able to see anything because we never printed anything. So we are now going to return the information. But remember, we had to check the length, right? It says, if the string is longer than the original string, then we will return it. Otherwise, we're going to return the new string. So if the length of the new string is in fact greater than the length of what I called line, then I want to print line. Otherwise, I will want to do the new compressed string because then it wasn't that shorter and it's worth my time. So the only thing we didn't do was reset this count variable, which is extremely important. So right here is when we're done. Oops, it's there we go. Right here is when we're done, right? We can reset the value to go back in that for loop. So if we hit run, da 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 da. Oh. And I type A A B B C C and it says A2 B2 C2. Run it again, do A A A A B B B B B B. And it's A4 B5. It clearly works, and that's how you do it. So any questions on that, you may comment below. Pretty simple, and this is a actual question that is asked in coding interviews, so not too bad.